Hey, what's up everybody? I'm gonna do a classic rock reaction. This is Led Zeppelin, man. Uh, Led Zeppelin from Houses of the Holy, and it is um, their first uh, track from that studio album called The Song Remains the Same. Now, you're probably uh, seeing the um, Song Remains the Same concert version um, before this one. So this now is my reaction to the studio version because from what I understand from everyone that um, they are um, the same song but very very different between studio and live. That uh, in some cases goes without saying pretty much man. So um, first and foremost man, I just want to give um, a shout out to uh, Marie Wilkinson Murray, thanks very much for the link, man. I appreciate it. And uh, thank you for your uh, insistence that I have to do back-to-back uh, -back comparisons of uh, the concert version and the studio version. So let's check this out, man. Song remains the same, studio version. Let's get it. Oh yeah, this is the album cover. The little kids on the rocks. Listen to those guitars come in. I like how it dips and slows down, and then it speeds up again.
music is universal wherever you go. That's what it's all about. First, first impression um, from this studio version and the uh, live uh, concert version. Um, the first thing that comes to mind is that both are all the, the, of these guys. They really, really have um, a spotlight. They each have their turn in the spotlight you know you're noticing definitely the drums and then you notice the great guitars and then you notice pages uh or uh, plants uh singing and the great lyrics and uh and of course you notice that constant great driving uh bass group from john paul jones i was thinking in my mind oh man which do i like better here you know this is one of those songs that will really, really challenge you if you were to be forced to say, okay, which do I like better out of the instrumentation and um, plant singing? You can only pick one. You'd be like, oh man, you can't pick one. They each had their spotlight in this song. Great, great example of showcasing their spotlight and also their playing prowess, their musicianship, their collective growth. I... Um, really like being on this chronological journey because you can really see from album one all the way now to this fifth album their growth their growth progression and their tight musicianship growing even more unified more tight and uh, because of that uh, cohesion there's um, more energy coming from it that's what I'm trying to say saying all that just to say this <laughs> more energy in it, you know, um, man, fantastic, let me talk a little bit more about that, but first I'm just going to do, uh, just a quick read, man, and, um, and then from there, um, I'll, uh, I'll speak a little bit more on that, I don't want to lose my way, so I'm just, uh, going to bring up my uh, info here on my Wikipedia page, but I'm having some problems with it. Yeah, it was here for a second, then all of a sudden it's gone. Okay. 
bear with me here. This page is just taking a while opening up for some reason. Okay, okay, there we go. All right. So first a little on Led Zeppelin and then uh, on this song, man. So Led Zeppelin were an English rock band formed in London in 1968. The group consisted of guitarist Jimmy Page, singer Robert Plant, bassist and keyboardist John Paul Jones, and drummer John Bonham. The band's heavy driven guitar sound has led them to be cited as one of the progenitors of heavy metal. Their style drew from a wide variety of influences, including blues, psychedelia, and folk music. After changing their name from the New York Birds, Led Zeppelin signed a deal with Atlantic Records that afforded them considerable artistic freedom. Although the group were initially unpopular with critics, they achieved significant commercial success. They were inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 1995. The museum's biography of the band states that they were as influential during the 1970s as the Beatles were during the 1960s. All right, now. And song info. The song remains the same. The song remains the same is a song by English rock group Led Zeppelin. It's the opening track from their 1973 album, Houses of the Holy. Composition. The song was originally an instrumental with the working title, The Overture. After singer Robert Plant added lyrics, it was temporarily known as The Campaign, before becoming The Song Remains the Same. In an interview he gave to Guitar World magazine in 93, guitarist Jimmy Page discussed the song's construction. Quote, it was originally going to be an instrumental, an overture that led into the rain song, but I guess Robert had different ideas. This is pretty good. Um, better get some lyrics real quick. Oh, this is what he was re recalling when they were talking together. Okay, I got it. I had all the beginning material together, and Robert suggested that we break down into halftime in the middle. After we figured out that we were going to break it down, the song came together in a day. I always had a cassette recorder around. That's how both The Song Remains the Same and Stairway to Heaven came together from bits of tape ideas. The lyrics are based on Robert Plant's belief that music is universal. He named NME in 1973. Every time I sing that, I just picture the fact that I've been around and around the world, and at the root of all, there's a common denominator for everyone. The common denominator is what makes it good or bad, whether it's a Led Zeppelin song or an Alice Cooper song. Yeah, so he's saying here that uh, uh, the love of music is a universal thing and it binds us all. We all collectively uh, have a love for music and the music itself provides us with um, uh, great benefits of um, healing. Um, it will uh, cross over borders and bring people together. It'll unify. It'll do all of these great things. I think that's what he's saying. Um, it says, yeah, he used the term that yeah, music is universal. Yeah, that's what this song is about, man. All right, so reception. In a contemporary review for Houses of the Holy, Gordon Fletcher of Rolling Stone gave The Song Remains the Same a mixed review, writing the track is, quote, the only other tune approaching the Zepp's past triumphs and works solely as a vehicle for Page's guitar antics, unquote. I take it he's not a big Led Zeppelin fan at this point. In a retrospective review of Houses of the Holy, Christopher Lenz of Consequence of Sound gave the song Remains the Same, a more positive review, praising every band member and writing that, quote, as the band moves through the many changes of the song Remains the Same, they are tight yet nimble, proficient yet unpretentious, unquote. They're definitely tight, as, like I said before, man, um, 
the chronology and following their growth progression from the first album all the way up to this album, I see their um, their cohesion. And what did this guy say? Proficient yet unpretentious. Um, and their tight musicianship. And I like the use of the term, term nimble. They're nimble. Yo, I totally get what he's saying. And especially in a song like this, being nimble in a way um, when um, it's dipping into the slowness and then it picks up again and then the energy comes back into it as the speed comes up that's what he means by uh, nimble and the precision um the tight precision is definitely there you know so they're they're getting better and better as they go along you know what i'm saying and i'm sure that's probably not the case with um un maybe certain acts, you know, they might not be getting better and better as they go along. They might be kind of plateauing and then kind of dipping as they go along. But I see the growth progression from first album to now this fifth one. They're definitely getting more tight, more nimble, as he says, more proficient for sure, man, for sure. It's amazing how two reviews from critics can be so vastly different. Rolling Stone on one side and then um, consequence of sound on the other. I mean, you know, perspective is perspective, you know. Um, but, uh, you know, this song, I think, is um, a great, great song. I, I really like it. And it's a really great example of showcasing each individual's unique talent. But together as a, a unit, they're definitely cohesive. And this song is a really, really great vehicle to um, showcase that my opinion anyway man um yeah and uh comparing this particular um studio version to the concert version you know now that i'm fresh off um i'm only like a couple of hours away from comparing the two here um and you'll get this reaction probably in a couple of hours after i publish uh, the song remains the same uh, concert version comparing the two um, I see and I hear s the subtle nuances of what makes the studio version more polished and refined compared to of course the concert version but I will say uh, if you were to force me to um, pick one of which I prefer I would say the concert version has a slight edge on the studio version for the simple fact that the concert version to me seems to have a bit more energy about it. Um, maybe it's because they were performing live. Uh, that's definitely a factor. Um, but I think that at the stage that they were at in their playing and their cohesiveness in their playing together, um, there seems to be more um, cohesion, tightness, and energy. Um, maybe it's because I was actually looking at a video of them and their antics on stage as well. But overall, what I'm getting is that um, there is a little bit more energy, more of a driving emotional force coming from um, the concert. Uh, version of this song. Love the studio version. Uh, I love the refined polishes and everything like that. But um, I like the raw, slightly gritty uh, tone of the um, live version. And I heard about Let Something uh, because so many of you have so many different varying ideologies in regards to Led Zeppelin and their talent and their musicianship. Um, it's now piecing it all together. I can uh, say that depending on the song that they're performing, um, it's either really, really excellent live or it's not as good as the studio rendition. You know, I mean, you can apply that to everybody, but in Led, Led Zeppelin's case, it seems to be either they're really bang on point when they're performing a certain song live, or it's just um, really far from um, uh, the level uh, compared to the studio. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to be, trying to pick my words carefully here. I don't want to 
upset any Led Zeppelin fans. Um, and of course you can disagree with me, but um, I've heard it said before that um, a lot of Led Zeppelin tunes live is just not um, on the same level of uh, proficiency. And I understand there's many different reasons for it. You know, they don't have the same um, studio quality available to them and all of these different things, but it's a different experience. The same song, um, live versus studio. You know what I'm saying? So that's that's what I heard about Led Zeppelin. You know, it's, it's, it's a toss up depending on the concert, the day, um, whatever is going on you can get a completely different song and the same song on a different day will also sound very very different yeah and you know some people really like that about Led Zeppelin and some people don't like that about Led Zeppelin and that's the knowledge that I'm picking up from a lot of people so hence um, the importance of doing um, a comparison between the studio version and um, the concert version and I understand why so many of you were insisting that you know hey you know we also want to see you know um, you react to you know both versions just so that you can get an impression I understand why you wanted to see that uh, yeah and you know I was also gonna say too as a uh, the song was playing now, and apologies, I didn't include the rain song in this because I've already got um, uh, a rain song reaction shot. Plus, um, the song remains the same. The concert version that I just did includes the rain song. So I'm just going to uh, keep the rain song uh, off of this reaction. But um, I was going to say the comparison of um, the song remains the same with the rain song. I like the fact that um, they're tied together and I understand why it's very important to um, keep them together and I like that um, cohesion better than um, the combination of um, Heartbreaker, Living Love and Mate, another example of two songs that go together but if you were to say um, well, choose which one out of these two songs that are kind of tied together, which uh, partnership do you like a little bit more? I would say I like the partnership of the song remains the same and the rain song just a little bit more, how it's it weighs into each other. Um, and I like how what I was saying in my first reaction, I, I uh, was expecting um, like a slower song. I expected the song remains the same to be a slower song only because I think um, the rain song is slower so I thought that it was just uh, slow but I really actually um, in thinking about it now I really like uh, how it slows down the song remains the same how it slows down a bit and then how uh, it speeds up so it seems to go very very well and I was saying that too uh, with the concert versions of course the songs are longer so if you have two slow songs segueing into each other. You've got a very, very, what, 10 minutes of the same kind of tone. So it's good that um, it varies in speed. But anyway, man, all that to say that I like the combination of uh, the song remains the same and the rain song together. Uh, in my opinion, they're a better pairing. All the songs are great, of course. Love Heartbreaker and Living Love Made. But this pairing to me um, is a little bit better. Uh, let me just uh, do a super quick uh, scroll down, man. Check my notes before I bounce here. Oh, yeah. Uh, so I just wanted to say that um, I've got um, a full reaction, uh, a full album reaction of um, uh, Jimi Hendrix, the artist of the month coming up. That'll be Electric Ladyland. I'll look for that in a day or so. I've also got um, uh, a Paul McCartney uh, quad coming up, a tribute to him. It's his birthday uh, on the 18th, which is uh, tomorrow. So I've got um, that reaction coming. And then I've got uh, a Canadian rockers slash 
uh, Lady of Rock um, uh, edition coming and it's featuring Joni Mitchell. So look for all of those um, uh, coming very, very quickly and all within this week, man. So um, just to give you an idea of what's in the pipeline for me. And, uh, and I think that's it. Yeah, that's it for my notes. So the only question I've got, you've got my impression of um, how I feel about this particular song, studio compared to the concert version. What uh, is your preference? How do you, um, which version do you like better of this particular song? That's what I'm asking, because I know um, from previous comments about the Rain song that a lot of people favors the um, concert version of the Rain song. What about this song? Um, which do you favor more, concert or studio? Let me know. That would be very, very interesting. Um, for me, the concert, of course, I explained why. Um, but tell me what you prefer. Also, tell me what you think about uh, my statements about um, uh, Led Zeppelin's sound, uh, studio versus concert sound in general. Do you feel that the concert sound is better, the studio sound is better, or it really depends on the song? Uh, let me know what you think about that. If you think I'm full of it, let me know that too. All right, man. So, yeah, that's it for my notes, man. So thanks very much for joining me. Hope you like this reaction. And, um, uh, yeah, Over the Hills and Far Away, that's it. Over the Hills and Far Away is the next song coming up for Led Zeppelin. And so look for that uh, early next week sometime. All right, have a good one, and I'll talk to you soon. Peace.